everybody and welcome to this video editing a photo from what looks like Becketer's Garden in Bavaria. I know this because I was there, um, so it's not an anonymous one this, it's Julie who came on the trip. So just going to give her a few tips which I'll share with everyone else. So this is, uh, we're in the library module there, so we'll just quickly go over to develop, which is control, alt and 2 if you want to shortcut, if you're into that kind of thing. So first off, let's have a quick look at the uh, histogram. Just to, well, actually, let's do the crop first. So I'm thinking with this one that I want the third line, the bottom third, on the uh, water there. So we've got two thirds mountains and sky, and one third. That should give us nice room for the um, the wooden tree root. I guess it is, isn't it? So let's just pop that up there. Something like that. You can see I've got, I've got the golden section option on the uh, Lightroom crop. Right. So, uh, oh, let's just make sure it's level, actually. So we can go to this angle tool here. And we'll just grab put this end over here and go to this end over there. So it was a little bit out. You see it just rotated a tiny little bit there. So to uh, change the angle you can use that tool just to level things up. You drove the level along the uh, the line of the water. So I'm going to recover some of the highlights because I think these clouds are a little bit burnt out. Um, I'm going to open the shadows up. It's sort of fairly standard technique I use with landscapes. I'm going to put the Alt key down and drag the black slider so we get something clipping, see how much punchier it all looks. See, if you go too far, you get lots of it. So we go to about there. And then the same with the whites. I think those clouds are going to go white pretty much straight away. About there. And now I think we can probably draw back on the shadows just to give it a little bit more punch. Um, we can add a bit more contrast with clarity. So I'm going to put about 40, 50 on there, about half and also a bit of contrast. So we're going from a, a fairly flat lit image, because it was quite flat light by that stage of the day, to something a little bit more um, punchy. Let's just bring the clouds down a little bit more with the white slider, so alt keys on the white. Um, okay, let's go down the controls and see what we can do. Maybe with the tone curve, let's just adding a little bit more contrast. If you drag the bottom bit down a tiny bit and the bo top bit up a little bit, you can get more contrast. Oh, one thing I haven't done is white balance. So let's go into here. Um, I'll try daylight. So it makes it quite blue look. If we go to shade, it'll make it a little bit warmer. And another trick is press the W key and find something that's colourless in the shot. So that might be a cloud, because they tend to be fairly grey, don't they? I could quite like that, it's warmed all this side up here, hasn't it? Excellent. Let's give it a bit more colour by increasing the vibrance. Nice. That's, whoops, I've just closed that by accident. So is there anything in here we want to increase the colour of? You can click on saturation and the little eye popper thing here. I'm going to make the blue sky a bit bluer, see what that looks like. That's way too much there, but it's there to illustrate a point. Maybe just subtly go up a bit more than it is. And maybe, I quite like these warm tones. So I'm going to find an orange tree. That's a tree that's orange, not one that grows oranges. And just tastefully put that up a bit. So we've got the blue and this lovely sort of orange glow going on down here. It's a shame about this cloud, isn't it? It's just, um, just a little bit overdone, so... I don't think we can rescue anything from that. Okay, let's try a bit, add a bit of sharpening. I think the detail, let's just click done. We're zooming on the detail on these trees. If we bung a load of sharpening on. Um, is it making it... I'm going to put my thumb on the Alt key and drag the masking across so it doesn't, it's only sharpening the bits that are white, so anything that's black now won't be sharpened, which is good because we don't want areas of the sky sharpening, it just adds what we call grain to them. And we'll reduce the detail, maybe up the radius a bit, 
and hopefully when we zoom out that will make these cliffy areas just that bit more yeah a bit more um, textured I think the word I'm looking for is and then we'll just add the lens corrections because they're for free oh doesn't seem to know what it was it was a Canon oh what was the lens probably a uh, kit lens I think it was wasn't it 18 to 55 I can find that um, well, I'll tell you what I'll just switch that off but if oh no, that's found it yep it's found it that's good and then we can maybe just add a bit of a vignette just to draw the eye to the middle a feather right now our focal point is this fella here so what I'm going to do the zoom back out I'm going to put a last, uh, one of these radio filters so you click right in the middle of it and you drag out like that so there's an area a little bit bigger than it <coughs> and if you click this checkbox there you can see oh it's the wrong way around it's actually going to affect everything else so you can invert the mask so now anything that's in that red area <coughs> is going to be affected Here's a little trick I didn't know about until recently, but if you double click on the word effects up here, it sets everything back to zero, which is pretty cool. Um, just saw that on a video I watched. Okay, so we'll just make. The cool thing is you can always change the size of these. Maybe bigger ones are better because you don't get the edges um, having a big sort of tide mark, which is what something you want to avoid. So. It's quite a dark thing, so I'm going to bring the shadows up to lighten those dark areas. So we add lots of sharpness so we can see more detail. Uh, maybe a bit of clarity. Uh, how's that? And if you wanted to, you could make it a little bit more colourful. Or you could make it black and white if you wanted to. But let's just add a little bit more colour. And I'm just going to see what happens to this. The problem is if you stop changing the exposure slider, look what happens. So I tend not to do that when I'm doing local edits. Okay, let's just see what it's like without it on. So you can switch it off and then back on again. So it does just add that a little bit more interest to it. Um, and I think, realistically, that's where I'd probably draw a line I might just be tempted to go to the picture there right click on it create a virtual copy so we've got two and then go to the black and white thing here HSL color black and white and just see what we can do with this so if you have a darker sky it always goes noisy when you do that in the night room Again, I'm just using this little eyedropper tool to brighten things up and then darken things down. So if you drag down, it darkens. If you push it up, it brightens. Um, so I think we've probably got potential to make it a bit more contrasting by bringing the uh, shadows down and maybe going for some proper black tone areas in here, really deep, dramatic. Just have a little slide of the exposure. So, so I don't tend to use the exposure slider much. Just like to pick the bits I want to change. One thing is this tree's gone a little bit dark. So again, I've gone over to the black and white control. I'm going to slide that up, and then maybe <coughs> remember we made an elliptical edit before. That's still there. It copies it across. So let's just increase the the whites on that a bit. I like the highlights. So at least there's a bit of detail. And then finally, let's just do a, create another virtual copy. So we've got three. I'm going to press Control Shift and R, which resets it. So that is the photo that came out of the camera. That's a black and white version of it, which you can bug into Photoshop and get carried away with if you want to. And that's a colour version of it. Start.
black and white colour. Hope that helped, Julie, and uh, looking forward to seeing more of your work soon. Thanks a lot.